Suppose you have n plus 1 points. You can generally find an nth degree polynomial whose graph runs through these points, but this requires solving a system of equations. We can simplify this process by using the Newton basis polynomials. So suppose you have n plus 1 points. The kth Newton polynomial is given by this rather daunting formula, but we can view this as the product of factors of the form x minus xi for i less than k. And we make our initial polynomial f0x equal to 1. The Newton polynomial will then be where the ai's are coefficients to be determined. Now you might wonder why we have what seems to be a very roundabout way of finding this interpolating polynomial. Well, suppose n of x is our Newton polynomial. Notice that the kth Newton basis polynomial has factors of the form x minus xi for all i less than k. And what this means is that for x equal to xi, the Newton basis polynomial will vanish its value will be zero, and this actually makes it much easier to solve our system of equations. Let's see how that works. So let's say we want to find our Newton basis polynomial for the curve that runs through these points, and then we'll find our Newton polynomial itself. So we have three points, so n is equal to two. It's always one less than the number of points because we start counting at zero. And so we have f0 of x, which is always equal to 1, and f1 of x and f2 of x. Now f1 of x will be the product of factors of the form x minus xi for all i less than 1. The only such factor is actually x minus x0, that's our first x coordinate, and so f1 of x is x minus 1. f2 of x will be the product of the factors of the form x minus xi for all i less than 2. And these are the factors x minus x0 and x minus x1. So f2 of x will be... And so our Newton polynomial will be a0 plus a1 times x minus 1 plus a2 times x minus 1 x minus 4. And now we need to solve for the ai's. Now, since the curve passes through 1, 3, we know that if x is equal to 1, n of x should be equal to 3. So if we substitute in x equals 1, and here's why the form of the Newton basis polynomials is so useful. Notice that at x equal to 1, our second and third Newton polynomials are going to evaluate to zero, so the unknowns a1 and a2 don't appear in our equation. And so we end up with the equation 3 equal to a0, which gives us our first coefficient. Next, we know the curve passes through 4, negative 5, and so we know that if x is equal to 4, n of x should equal negative 5. Now we already know a0, and again, because of the form of our Newton basis polynomial, the last factor disappears, and our equation only has one unknown value. And so we solve. And find our value for a1. And again, the curve passes through 6, 4. So filling in the values that we already know, we find that if x is equal to 6, y is equal to 4. And this gives us an equation with only one unknown, and we can solve for that last coefficient. And since we know the coefficients, we can write the Newton polynomial. And this works no matter how many points we have. So if I have four points, then n is equal to 3, and we'll have four Newton basis polynomials, f0, always equal to 1, f1, that's x minus the first of our x values, f2, 
Well, that'll be x minus the first x value times x minus the second x value. f3 will be x minus each of the first three x values. Notice that the last x value never gets to the table, as it were. In other words, x minus this last x value is not going to be a factor of any of our Newton polynomials. And again, we can go through each of our points in sequence. Since the graph passes through 0, 5, then if x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 5. And again, since each of these last three polynomials has a factor of x, then when x is equal to 0, they'll vanish, and the only thing we'll have left is a 0. Since the graph passes through 2, 3, then if x is equal to 2, n of x is equal to 3. And again, these last two terms have a factor of x minus 2. So when x is equal to 2, they'll vanish. And we already know the value of a is 0. And so in the resulting equation, the only unknown we have is going to be a1. And so we can solve for it. Since the graph passes through 4, negative 7, if x is equal to 4, n of x will be negative 7. And again, if x is equal to 4, this last term vanishes, and we'll get an equation where the only unknown is a2. So we solve. And in our last point, if x is equal to 5, then n of x is equal to 12, and that gives us an equation which we can then solve for a3. And so we have the coefficients of our polynomial, which in this case turns out to be a cubic.